Well, from the situation in Libya to what's happening at home, and the Labour Party has called for Rishi Sunak to block Liz Truss's resignation on his list, saying people should not be rewarded for crashing the economy. Ms Truss will give a speech this morning in which he's expected to defend the record of a short-lived administration and urged Rishi Sunak to cut taxes. Well, joining me now is the Shadow Paymaster General, Jonathan Ashworth. Uh, good to see you this morning. So, so you want Rishi Sunak to block Li Liz Truss's resignation on his list. I mean... Do you think anything will really come of this? Well, look, the key issue here is that it's 12 months now since that quite disastrous set of decisions the Conservative government took, which ran our economy off a cliff. It led to a run on pension funds. It means that homeowners are paying hundreds, if not thousands of pounds more on their mortgages. And at the same time, I think something like 300 billion has been wiped off the value of properties. So people's mortgages going up, rent going up, and the value of properties coming down because of decisions taken by the Conservative government 12 months ago. And now for Liz Truss to be out here today uh, saying, you know, it was a London dinner party circuit that blocked her, when people in Leicester, in Ashfield, in Bury and Bolton and Bolsover are paying more for food, I think is just extraordinary. If Rishi Sunak had any backbone, he would block this Liz Truss list today because I don't think businesses, hard-working families paying so much more on their mortgage think that list should go ahead. In many ways, it's a kick in the teeth. But, I mean, we could all look back in history at, at, at politicians that we haven't liked or necessarily admired and say, well, why did they get to, to give honours? I mean, it doesn't... I mean, is this something, one, that the Prime Minister could actually realistically do anything about, given the conventions, and two, would Labour change if you came into power? Would well, you reform the honour system entirely? You hit the nail on the head. The conventions. Mm. It's just a convention. So uh, Rishi Sunak could intervene if he had any backbone, if he was strong enough. But he's pretty weak, as we know. He's weak Rishi, isn't he? Uh, in action man, as he's well known uh, and has been branded because he never does anything. But he could intervene. But the key thing in the yeah, end in is action that... Man versus, uh, you know, in action man versus... In action. In action man. I mean, he doesn't do anything. He, can he, can't, all, he can't get a grip of anything, can he? The, you know, he can't deal with the NHS. The boats are still coming. Prices in the shops are still uh, crippling for a lot of people. He really is an uh, uh, inaction man. But the key thing is... 12 months ago, the Conservatives ran our economy off a cliff. They crashed the economy and people are paying so much more, hundreds of pounds more on their mortgage as a consequence. And now for Liz Truss to be coming out saying she wants to give all these uh, awards and honours to her, to her cronies. And, you know, get this, right? She's writing a book. Can you believe this? She's writing a book. You couldn't make this up, called 10 Years to Save the West after spending 49 days as Prime Minister trashing the economy. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Keir Starmer said at the weekend that politicians who, who use insults like the ones <laughs> that you've just used don't have anything to say. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, my insults have always got, always got wit and panache about them. So, <laughs> uh, no, no, the key point is I'm making is a policy, a policy objection to what the Conservatives have done to our economy because of what they did to mortgages, what they've done to hard-working families. We're really struggling at the moment. But on, on honours... Let's be clear, would Labour reform the honours list altogether? Yeah, they, would you they, get rid of it? I mean, you know, this system does need reform. Of course it needs reform. And by the way, you know, Labour, so Prime, La yes. Labour Prime Ministers didn't do these resignation honours. Gordon Brown and Tony Blair didn't do this. Right? And they were in government for a lot longer than the 49 days that Liz Truss was Prime Minister for. But just, just a clear yes from you, Labour would reform this yeah, system. Yeah, this system does need reform. Yeah. OK. Um, we're expecting an announcement this week about the future of HS2. Um, would Labour commit to building HS2 all the way from London all the way to Manchester? Yeah, our, our position is that HS2 should be completed to Manchester and Leeds. Uh, there's all this speculation. The Tories are uh, hinting that they're not going to do that. Well, I, you know, I'm not going to you know, be drawn by them uh, flying kites, but it just it tells me again that when it comes to the, the Midlands and the north of England, that the Tory party aren't really interested in them. But Pat McFadden said yesterday that Labour would look at the cost. He didn't give it an equivocal, the same answer that you're giving today, which is that Labour would definitely build it. No, no, no. no what, what Pat is saying, quite rightly, by the way, is if there are changes in Jeremy Hunt's budget, then, oh, that means you have to look at that. You have to look at the financial position. But our so that's a... That no, 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 but I, that's, that, that is just how, you know, that's how budgets work. A government announced a series of financial decisions and the opposition respond to them. But our commitment to extending HS2 to the Manchester and Leeds uh, is clear. And actually, we think the government, rather than trying to wiggle off this commitment, should give some clarity now to investors, to businesses, because this extension will boost the economy in the North and the Midlands. 
But if the government want to sort of, as I say, wriggle off that, again, I think that's clear evidence that this government, have, the Tory party, have given up on, nor on northern towns and cities. So would Labour go ahead with it, whatever the cost? Well, as always on these matters, we look at things when the government announced their financial position, and then once the government have announced their financial position in the budgets, and there could be more budgets before a general election, we'll outline our position in the manifesto. But today, we are pushing the government to give us clarity that they are going to honour the commitment that they made to northern towns and cities. But it looks like they're trying to wriggle off that commitment. But it's, it might sound to some viewers that you're trying to wriggle off it as well. You're saying you're going to wait for the government to make an announcement about money before you will absolutely unequivocally say that Labour would build it. Well, it's in entirely... Look, look, we started this interview when I was uh, criticising the Conservatives for making irresponsible, unfunded uh, decisions last year in that disastrous mini-budget. So that is why the Labour Party will always be fiscally disciplined. We have an iron-disciplined iron approach to the fiscal position. So it's perfectly sensible that if governments change its positions or the fiscal, fiscal position changes, that we will study that carefully and respond. But today, we are very clear, the government should offer and should commit to extending that, uh, uh, that railway line uh, and, and clear up this confusion that they have created. Mm. Uh, Keir Starmer's been racking up the air miles recently. He's been talking to France and the EU. Are, are you confident that Labour can get a bespoke deal with the EU that won't involve a quota system, i.e. us having to take immigrants from the EU? But we're not joining that e We're not joining that EU quota system. And we have to have a new approach because the Conservatives have uh, lost order and lost control of our asylum system. In fact, they've essentially, Rishi Sunak has essentially allowed it to be outsourced to these criminal gangs. And one of the most prominent Conservatives, the vice chair of the Tory party said, oh, the criminal gangs will always be with us as if we should all just give up on them. No, we believe we should be going after these gangs. We should be treating them as terrorists. We want to cooperate with Europe on, on sharing of intelligence, on security matters. We need to be looking at things like particular court orders where their assets are frozen, like you would apply to suspected terrorists. None of that is happening under the Tories. They've been completely given up on these gangs. And we need a policy that, where people who have applied for asylum, if their asylum application is not valid, and they're from Albania or India or wherever it is, they should be returned. But at the moment, the Tory policy is to stick everybody in, a, in these hotels across the country, costing £2 billion, and do nothing. Just leave them there. That is not a realistic and sensible way to deal with this problem. That is giving the green light to these terror, um, uh, criminal gangs smuggling people across the channel. We want to go after these gangs. But why does the Labour Party think Europe would be, be willing to help with all of those things that you want help with if we're not, in turn, willing to take some of their numbers from them? Because we want to cooperate on the security front in a way in which isn't happening at the moment. You know, there isn't that level of cooperation with the security services and the police services uh, uh, to really go after these gangs in a targeted way. And that's what we want to do. And that's something the government isn't doing. Okay. Jonathan Ashworth, Shadow Payne Master General, thanks Thank for coming in.